فإن الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات. On one hand there is a fear that these things are getting more expensive and I'm not able to do, keep up with these things, to do what I'm supposed to do. On the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what will happen is sometimes you will lose some of what you have. Financially, you are losing. And things are getting expensive. So the person is really having difficulty from both sides. If I can just keep up with whatever I have, so I'll be able at least to fight with these things and manage to live the way I am at the same. But the problem is I'm losing on this hand and these things are getting more expensive. When you will try, you will test you through some fear. And fear from all around, from within the family. Fear from outside. And there is fear everywhere in the world. What you are. And famine. وَنَقْسُمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفَسِ وَالْتَمَرَاتِ And most of property. نَقْسُمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ Most of property. And a person is losing some of the things that he already owns. وَالْأَنْفَسِ Losing some of the people. Family members dying, relatives dying, numbers of families or of people living in the town or of an ummah getting lower, going down. Not to middle one, but answers with some of us. And most of produce. The person is working harder and harder, but the outcome is less. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these are all different ways that I try people. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ In these situations, give a good news to those who have sorrow. Give glad tidings to those who practice sorrow and patience. Who are those الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبًا They are the people whenever they go through a hardship, go through a difficulty. They say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِنَّا إِنَّا Normally we use this dua only at the time of death. And for some reason there just became general praying and understanding that you say inna 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 when someone dies. So if you say it on some other situation, the person will say, no one dies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all of these situations, whenever there is a difficulty where you need to have sober, make this dua. Say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْكِ رَجِعُونَ So that's it. We learn in the Ahadith that a person put something in his pocket. And then all of a sudden you know it happens to us sometimes that you're looking for it and you can't find it. And for a few seconds you feel that you lost it. This is also a type of hardship and musibah where we should say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْكِ رَجِعُونَ is for all situations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the reward for those who have suffered and who have patience and those who would recite this dua at the time of hardships and difficulties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمَا مُسْتَغُونَ Three rewards. These people will keep on joining the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will open the doors of His blessings for them, these people. Number two, they will keep on receiving the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Blessing and mercy. Number three, وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمَ الْمُسْتَدُونَ These are the right regarding people. They keep on getting the desire from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is it that we learn from this ayah and from this topic? The thing that we need to remind ourselves, most of us are not having time for the deen of Allah, for turning to it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No time to recite for her. 
No time to perform our Salatah. No time to get up for Salatah Tahajjud. No time to do the Sunnahs before and after the Salat. No time to do the Istighfar. No time to do the Tbihat. No time to attend the Jama'ah in the Masajid. No time to sit with our children and teach them the Book of Allah and the Deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have no time whatsoever for the Deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because of these situations. And we are just trying to struggle with these situations. And these situations are keeping us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not sabr. This is against sabr. When a person would give up the deen of Allah because of the situations this person is going through in this world, simply means now these situations become fitness for the person. We always need to remember that any difficulty, any calamity that befalls the world, it could be the smallest thing to the worst thing in the world. They are nothing but a chain of trials and tests for human beings. And with all of these types of difficulties, every human being goes through one of the two situations. There is no third situation. Every human being will go through one of the two situations. Either this hardship and difficulty, calamity that, uh, that, that the world is facing, becomes rahma for this person or becomes fitna for this person. One of the two. There is nothing out of it. Either this will become rahma or it will become fitna. Someone lost hundred dollars. This is his own personal problem. Losing these hundred dollars could become rahma for him, could become fitna for him. Someone lost his job. Losing his job could become rahma for this person, or it could become fitna for this person. In some situations, may Allah protect us, but we see calamities befalling these people, different places, earthquakes, and many others. These situations, either they become rahma for those people, or they become fitna and adab for those people. It's one of the two situations. And we are the ones who will decide what we would like this thing to be for us. It's up to us. We will decide that whether we would like to make it rahma for ourselves or like to make it a sitna for ourselves. How that decision is going to be made. If this thing is connecting us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As, Rasul, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us in this ayah. That the first thing, as soon as a person went through hardship, he did not start shouting and running here and there. The first thing this person did was, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Right away he remembered his Lord. He remembered, he remembered his Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he turned towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this, situation gets us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it becomes a rahmah for us and if the very same situation makes the person turn away from Allah he is cursing at everyone he is shouting and crying and is trying to run here and there to correct your situation, does not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This became fitna and adab for this person. And it could be a situation in a family. Four people in the family. Three people are making that situation to be rahmah for them, and one of them is turning that situation, the very same situation, is turning it to be adab and fitna for himself. إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ Your wealth and your children are fitna. This is, of course, for those people who would make, who would use the excuse of their wealth and their families, their children and their responsibilities to turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No time for prayer, no time for deen, no time for quarrel, because I have to work. I have to invest. 
I have business, I have my, my shop, I have my factory, I have my company, I have my office. And from time over here, I have my family, I have my children. Using these things to keep us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they become fitness. And the very same thing could become rahmah. If we use the very same thing, our wealth, our families, our situation, we use it for returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the very same thing becomes rahmah for some people. For some, it's rahmah, for some, it's fitness. It's our decision. What we use these things for. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that Muslims, whenever a hardship or difficulty befalls a person, if this is our habit, that we turn to Allah, this thing becomes Allah. And we need to remember, there isn't any person in the world who could say that I never had to go through hardships in my life. We all wish. And sometimes we look at certain people and we feel, this person is having such a pleasant life, you know, I wish I could have this type of life. Different people have different type of people that look up to and then وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ فَنَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرٌ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْطِرٌ إِلَّا مَنْ تَوَلَّى وَكَفَرَ فَيُعَذِّبُهُ اللَّهُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَكْبَرُ
Some people are known and harm you they will be getting into the burning fire. And the ayah continues talking about Jahannam and about the hardships of Ahra. Then, the next set of ayahs talk about the blessings of Jannah in the Akhirah. These ayahs are describing the Jannah and telling us the blessings that we will be receiving in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from Jahannam and grant us the Jannah. After that, when you look at the literal meaning, it seems that everything has changed. As if someone told us, wait a minute, let me just talk about something else. This wasn't the topic I'm talking about. And all of a sudden the ayahs would come, أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِي لِكَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ Don't they see it became of how they are created? وَيْلَ السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ And it describes how they have been raised. وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ and of the mountains, how firmly they have been placed. Well, in an ugly case of Sotihat, and at the earth, how it has been flattened. <coughs> now, talking about Akhirah, all of a sudden talking about these creations, and then when it comes to creation, you're talking about Kemo. You're talking about the sky, how they have been raised. As it looks like now we have gone to point from talking about Akhirah and Akhirah, Jannah and Jahannam, all of a sudden we change the topic, we started talking about science. Creation of chemos, creation of the skies, creation of the mountains, creation of the earth. And then, after talking about the creation of these four things, again the ayahs goes back, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ Remind them, because you are only a reminder, you are not the one who would force them to Whoever will turn away, that's his own responsibility, he will be punished in after and again, then the ayahs will end at that. The scholars who have worked on the tafsir of Quran, they study the Quran in depth. And they understood the real meaning and the message behind the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They tell us that this surah is nothing but talking about human nature. And talking about the development of human beings and how a human being deals with situations, in simple words you may say that this uh, surah is talking about developing the personality of individuals. How each and every individual has his own different personality and how we develop our personality. What should we do to develop the right personality? Now, if you really present this topic to someone and say, you know, we need to talk about developing the personality. Where should I look for it? In what book should I look for this topic for? And I don't think anyone will tell us or anyone will teach us anything about it. But the beautiful teachings that we have in Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about developing the right personality is something that we may not be able to find it anywhere else. And this is so important. Normally, when you meet a person, the first thing you would like to know about this person is about his personality. What type of person is he? If this person is polite, or is very harsh, if this person is soft, or is very hard, does he smile, or is always serious? What type of personality does this person have? Does this person like to help others, or he enjoys seeing people in hardships? This is the first thing we learn about a person, and this is what we like to judge. When we see a person, we judge people, this is the first thing. Every person starts looking into the other person, what type of personality does he have? And it's such a serious issue that a lot of times when marriage is failing 
and the Ashkariya in the world, the main reason behind it is personalities. Two different kinds of personalities, they could not get along. And of course, this is in the first stage, when you see a person, you like to know his personality. Then after that, when you travel with the person, or you deal with the person, or you live with the person, you spend time with the person, you learn more and more about the person's personality. What kind of person is he? He likes to work, or he's very lazy. He likes to just get all the work done for him by others. Does this person is forgiving, and he has a habit of forgiving, or he will remember all of your wrong doings and will remind you about them for the rest of your life. Different type of personality that we have. But the question is, where do we get this personality from? A lot of times people think that it's a gene in a human life, in a human body. And you just inherit that. You can do nothing about it. This is how you're going to be. If your parents or one of them was a person who was always angry and he's fighting and arguing, this is how you're going to be for sure. But we see that Quran and the Hadith are teaching us that this is not a gene of human body that you just inherit it from others. Personality is something that you develop as you grow. We see a lot of children, very struggling in the childhood. As they grow, they are very polite. But now it is changed. At first it changed, they were very playful. All of a sudden it changed, and the light settled. There were children who didn't want to do no work when the childhood, as they grow, they are very hard working, and it could be vice versa. Very active child, very helpful as he grows, as soon as he comes up. Personalities are developed by our souls, and we need to work on our personalities and the personalities of our children. Where people are developing the personalities from? It's from their atmosphere. People around them. And we see a lot of times the young generation growing over here are developing the personalities from movies. By watching these movies continuously, now the rest of the life, all they spend their life is just hope that I can fly like that person was flying. Someday I will start flying too. And I can keep on beating people up and keep on doing all of these crimes and at the end I will be the most successful person because this is what this person has seen all the time. And then depending on what type of movies they want accordingly, that type of personality is said they want. This is, these are the thoughts that are running through the minds of all times. And what are our actions? Our actions are nothing but the thoughts that run through our mind. Initially, the person just thinks about an idea. Then he starts planning for it. And then it comes into the action. So it starts with a thought. Where do these thoughts come from? This is where we get them from. Watching people doing things. So it's not that our children are developing these personalities out of nowhere by being no, it's they are developing from the best field that they are getting wrong. A lot of them who like some sports, this is the type of personality they develop. From seeing some of those players and then the start developing those personalities. Dress, way of walking, way of talking, way of dealing with others. Sometimes, all of them, I'm sure some of us have experienced this, that you see our children, they come home, and they like to say, cursing the parents. And for them, it's nothing wrong. He's not doing anything wrong. It's a joke for them. 
He's going to curse at you for five minutes, then he will be your friend. All he's doing is just relating some of these things that he has seen in one of the movies where a child or a young man comes home and starts doing this to his parents, and now, after that, you know, they get around and then everything is as if it goes back to normal as if he hasn't done anything. They didn't just come up with an idea of doing it. No, they have seen it somewhere. So personalities are developed as children grow and as people grow. 